Well, joining me now to get through some of the political stories of the day is Liberal Senator Holly Hughes. Holly, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Now, I spoke at the top of the show. You would have heard about Labor's grand plan to reduce the uh, so-called gender pay gap. They've got this new legislation that was passed last year. It's coming into force next month and businesses will be required to publish their salary data. A, will this make any difference? Mm. I suspect it won't. But why are we so obsessed with telling women that they have to be at work when clearly on the numbers I talked about before in terms of who is taking paid parental leave, it would seem families are mm. still choosing for mothers to stay at home? Yeah, look, I mean, absolutely. And I, this whole debate over the gender pay gap has just always done my head in, to be quite honest with you, because, I mean, I took time out of the workforce. My superannuation isn't what it probably would be had I stayed in the workforce rather mm. than spending a significant number of years at home with my children. You know, for my sins, I had three under three and a half years of age. I mean, it was a busy, busy <laughs> time where I was at home with children. I mean, you know, I should have got paid for that. But, you know, that's the reality, that when you make the choice as a family to have children, that quite often, you know, it does involve, as, you know, many of your viewers would know, one of mine has special needs, so that required uh, an extra level of step-up in parenting, if you like. But there are a lot of families who make that choice. There's increasing numbers of families that dad's mm. choosing to stay home for a little bit of time as well. So each family has to be able to make the decision that they want. But we do know traditionally it's mum that takes a bit of a step out, but it's also mum who tends to go back into casual work or reduced hours uh, because anyone with children will tell you whilst they might hit school age, let me tell you, that's when the fun begins because you've got the music lesson, the sports <laughs> training, the dancing, you know, everything. Everything after and all the running around that comes with being a parent and having children at that age. Uh, so there are reasons why overall uh, the average income of a, of a female in Australia might be less. We also know that more women do tend to go into those caring roles, so aged care, nursing, mm. uh, even teaching, some of those professions, that, you know, they don't pay as much as if you're an investment banker uh, or the partner of a law firm. But it just seems that this government is just, A, wedded to identity politics wherever they can find it. And, I mean, it's almost like they're hunting it out to, to push a new uh, identity issue to the fore. But they're now saying the individual businesses will have to report. Well, guess what? That's a whole lot more work for a business who might already been doing it <laughs> tough or struggling in this current economic climate, but now let's whack another layer of red tape on you. I mean... We know no one in the Labor Party has actually worked for a real business, but this is just indicative of how they don't understand how businesses work. I know, and I just hate how women are sort of made to feel guilty now for, for staying at home, as though they're some kind of traitor to the feminist cause. If you want to work, work. The, the opportunities oh. are there. But if you want to be a stay-at-home mum, uh, I, I think it's, it's good for society. Yeah. The studies show it's good for children. Forget about this gender pay gap nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, the, the renewable mm. energy target, Labor's renewable energy target, uh, would seem to be in a bit of trouble now because the Environment Minister, Federal Environment Minister, Tanya Plibersek, she's blocked this offshore wind farm terminal at Victoria's port of Hastings, which Victoria mm. considers crucial to their renewable energy job down there. She says it's an unacceptable risk to local flora and fauna. Now, I've argued all along that, that all of this stuff, they want to put up all these wind turbines, it's actually terrible for the environment. So maybe on that token, mm. they've actually woken up to this for once, but the consequence of that is that it makes it harder to meet our emissions targets. We weren't going to meet them anyway, but I love that there's a little bit of a fight mm. going on between the uh, Victorian Labor government and the federal Labor government over this now. Well, you'd almost think that the fight might be happening within the Labor government federally as well, because it, it looks like the left doesn't know what the far left hand is doing when it comes here, because Chris Bowen's out there constantly harping on about the need for renewables and the fact that we're going to have this incredibly fast transition to renewable energy, that it's going to be the cheapest form of energy. I mean, 
we've got more renewables in the system than we've ever had before and find me a person whose power bills are going down. I mean, it's just an absolute fallacy. Uh, but I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret. Uh, I live near, well, in Tanya Plibersek's uh, federal seat uh, for my sins, but clearly the Greens are going to target her <laughs> at the next election because there are starting to be posters mm. come up already with photos of Tanya uh, looking at her to stop all new coal, that she's making these decisions that are damaging the environment. So the Greens are certainly going to conflate those two issues. So they're not going to be too worried. And we know in the Greens pyramid of, and as I say, this values, in their pyramid, uh, renewable yeah. energy is at the top. The environment, they used to care about the whales, they used to care about the koalas, but that's below renewable energy. So they would be less worried about the flora and fauna, the Port of Hastings, than they are about the opportunity to develop offshore wind farms. So it's going to be an interesting debate between them because uh, the Greens won't be able to reconcile their two wants here of saving the environment and developing as much renewable energy as possible.